That's right, leverage this motherfucker. So I guess Don is a hippie now? Did they have hippies in the early 60s? I didn't think hippies were created until 1968 or 69. Summer of 69, I think, is when uh, Woodstock happened. When did the hippies put the flowers in the uh, muzzles of the soldiers' rifles? When did that happen? I don't know. I guess I'm, I know a lot about the 60s, but, you know, apparently not enough. I don't know the history of hippies. But these are definitely hippies, right? Like, these, these probably these people are in hip, important in hippie culture. I'm sure there's a lot of references that went straight over my head. I don't want to Google anything. Because even if you Google the real person, you'll see... You know, milestones in their life that could be plot relevant, right? You know, maybe they died in in sixty two, and there was a fucking ad agency person in the hotel room. Not likely, but you know, I'm just I'm not trying to get spoiled. But something tells me that at least one of the people we met in the last episode, one of those hippies, is a real person. Maybe more than one. They seem just so three dimensional, but at the same time, it's like they came out of nowhere. Uh, I don't know. Let's go ahead and get into this shit. I wonder if he's still going to be hanging out with these hippies. Maybe he be smoking a blunt by now. Maybe he'll have a tie-dye shirt on. And got a perm or something, you know? Maybe this is an important part of his evolution. You know what it's not doing? It's not getting him any closer to his wife. So I started to think my prediction was correct. But let's go ahead and jump into this. Episode 12 of Season 2, The Mountain King. Oh, shit. He's gone full hippie. He smoked that blunt. He started seeing mountain kings up out here. He saw Grizzly Adams up in this bitch. God damn, man, this ain't good. <laughs> Ellie, those go in your room. And Bobby, put your trucks in the toy box. I'm God not damn. made. I mean, I'd have my trucks in my room. Like, what the fuck are they doing in the dining room? I never had my toys in the other parts of the house. I'm not trying to get them stepped on or, you know, kicked over or some shit. God damn. Signing his name and shit. That's got to be illegal. This explains the finances, though, doesn't it? Where the fuck is everybody? Are you burning the house down? Damn, it smells like shit in here. Yep, it definitely smells like shit in here. What do you think oh, you're doing? Oh, shit. God damn, Sabrina. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> burn the house down. You're hurting me? Good. I mean, I can't believe go what upstairs. are you doing in the closet there? You're not going to be watching television. You're not going to be playing with your friends. I'm taking God away damn. Barbie. You get in there. Yeah. <laughs> what the closet? What the Tell fuck is this? Time out. You left because you're stupid and mean. They fucking knew he left, motherfucker. You want to sleep in there? This is a terrible punishment. Before? They definitely know. <laughs> well, that explains that, don't it? That's why they're acting out. Yeah. You can sit here and he's not. Yeah. They figured it out. When he leaves for these trips, he has a suitcase with him. They figured this shit out, motherfucker. You're not as smart as you think you are. Oh, the suitcase came back, didn't it? Can we call him on the phone? We saw that suitcase in the last episode. Please don't tell. Hey, then don't be a bad girl. Damn, this is terrible punishment. Like, first you pull their hair, shove them in a fucking closet. The fuck is all that, man? Look at you, you fucking hippie. Where'd your tie go? I called the meeting. So where are the refreshments? Oh, shit. Yeah. Then give it to us like Jesus at the Last Supper. Oh, so refreshments are alcoholic little fucking no, plastic my cups. No, huh? Who the fuck would drink alcohol in plastic Vermont, cups? we made our saying. own ice cream. It was uh, a pain in the ass. You ever snow ice cream? That's something poor people do, right? You get a fresh snow, bring some of that snow in, throw some sugar in, and you got snow ice cream. Peterson had some question about your expenses regarding... Why doesn't he just die already? Lutess. Spence Chapin, the adoption agency. How about you say a little louder? What? Mrs. Oh, shit. His oh, wife sorry, did it behind your back. Something. Good luck. God damn. This is white betrayal. You're making me angry before dinner. <laughs> I think it's one of the blessed things. Because it's about your appearances. An abandoned child. Pretend you're not. Yeah, will you shut the hell up, by the Can way? I'm trying to be angry over here, but I'll let you know I'm angry. <laughs> Quit editorializing. It's not your fucking job. Hello, Bertram. Uh, Bertram. Large, Bertram Cooper. You... Maybe I can keep that in my fucking alcohol soaked brain. I fucking love this guy, though. Damn it, Alice. Right. I don't ask much of you. 
My God damn, man. cost more than your carpeting. Yeah, bitch. That's right. You're the bottom in this relationship. <laughs> I always say it's the smartest thing I ever did, helping you out. Twenty to fifty per ship. She's his angel. To think that Mother thought you were a failure. She made God me who I am. Bet she was nuts, man. Shit's me and crazy. Let Roger Sterling have what he always wanted, to die in the arms of a 20-year-old. You got that right. Is, and I hate to <laughs> say this, Bertram, but you are old. Older than and me. And weird. I can't even imagine what that must be like. <laughs> God damn. I mean, he's pretty spry for an old motherfucker. You ruined that poor architect's life. God damn. Go visit your cattle. I, I bet he is hard to work for, Beth. Time to find out who the fuck this is from its past. Probably an old girlfriend. His first girlfriend. If I'm not back in two days, the police will be here. God damn. How would you bring that up? Because I don't want you to hurt me. I Left just want to know where my husband girl. is. It's a simple misunderstanding. Oh, right. There's a lot of men with my name. Right, right, right. Okay, this is from earlier this season. Can't you be a human being? I'm his wife. Look, he's I don't care dead, what he man. asked you to do. I need to know. I guess she wouldn't have been notified he's dead, would she? Now that you mention it. Because he didn't die. According to the army, he didn't don't die. Don't make me do something I don't want to do. Well, like I said, this is victim number one, right? We've talked about this before. He'll go to her apartment and find that letter and take it with him. Burn it. Are you sure? There's little pieces of them all over me. What do you want, man? I guess she just wanted closure. I guess he can... Uh, Take down his kill room, right? She just wanted closure. I guess he's visiting this old lady. Did we become friends after this? I guess they could have bonded over knowing her husband. He never mentioned me. Well, I this is awkward. Me. He wanted to marry my sister. She looks just like me with two good legs. Goddamn. I guess they grew close. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a welcome surprise. <laughs> that explains this. It's dates. <laughs> Wait a minute, how you play with no hands on the keyboard? Are you next? I don't play. Yeah, in other words, why are you sweating this me, motherfucker? Dick. This is my lesson time. It's called the Hall of the Mountain King. Oh, okay. So no hippie shit, it's just a fucking musical reference. Man, pfft. Thanks for cutting into my fucking lesson time, asshole. Bye, Mrs. Draper. You're tan. It's weird her, hearing her call, being called Mrs. Draper. It really is, man. Very weird. Business. Is it, though? Is it really business? <laughs> he better come back with a huge account, man. Are you in trouble? No. Well, then what? Just wandering in the wilderness. You know, I was gonna I was gonna make this point the first time we had a commercial, but then we had this scene before the commercial. There's no narrative tension, but like, oh, what are we to do with you? You know, she's not gonna turn him in, obviously, because he maintained the ruse. He would have just switched names or went back to his old name or some shit, right? So the tension really was there. There was no there was no intention. There was no narrative tension intended there, right? It was just they're setting up the future. This is what happened in the past, and that, you know, the past predicts the future, shit like that. Sometimes you can misunderstand the intention of the writers. Sometimes it's like, oh, were we supposed to be surprised? Well, I'm not. It turns out, no, you weren't supposed to be surprised. They wanted you to think this, so then they, they wanted you to be, look, pay attention to the right, so they could hit you with this left, right? Yeah, that kind of shit. In this case, there's no narrative tension intended. It's just, they're setting up this relationship, and they did it in just a couple quick scenes. They had a couple few scenes when he was getting the car a few episodes ago, and then... That quick scene there, and that was it. And then you you really don't even... They may fill in some more gaps in between somehow. Like maybe he did her a solid somehow. Somebody's fucking with her, you know, he, she, he got her out of a jam somehow. Or they just kept talking and he kept giving her reminiscences or whatever. And, you know, she had nobody in her life. But you could not show another scene between two of them and from the past that we would understand. They, they bonded over her husband. You know, that's all we need to know. Sometimes you can tell too much. I love how no one at the job hey. gives a shit that John just like, keeps it. fucking off like this. How did that happen? Listen to me very <laughs> carefully. This ain't gonna work, man. We are not adopting a child. 
That's final. Already then. Well, hell's bells, Trudy. That is. Yeah. Final. <laughs> he you talks don't like a dork. Speak to me that way. Really? <laughs> Damn, you dude. You have lost your mind. Damn, there's somebody walking downstairs that just got fucking a fucking concussion, man. The fuck is wrong with you? Holy shit, man. Not to mention, like, he obviously did it to hurt her, but goddamn, throw this shit in the trash, dude. That fucking attempted murder you just did downstairs. Oh, the police show up, motherfucker. What, he don't ever let her drive? What the fuck, man? Tony. Tony, Tony. What? Stop. If you're on top, that makes me a bitch? Is that what's up? I am tired. Really? Okay. Unbelievable. It infringes upon my masculinity if, if a woman's on top. Man, you're out of your goddamn mind. Stop that. You know there is no before. Right. You, I mean, this dude, man, he's out of his goddamn mind. This woman's a catch, man. Oh, again on Wednesday. Some of us just don't want to be happy. I'm just saying. I'm outraged. His pants have a 38 inseam. <laughs> <laughs> Harold. You've been hitting that. Meet him. She's doing pretty good for herself, I see. You paid for it. Oh, okay. He's been hooking her up. Okay, that's part of the explanation. You've been in California too long. <laughs> he got her to the fuck Why out of New York. That's for goddamn sure. Sally is eight. He knows her names. One of them anyway. Body is five. Okay. He knows her names. Just making sure. I always felt that we met so that both of our lives could be better. Especially mine. <laughs> That's just how it is. Ruined everything. That's right. It's about time you blame yourself, motherfucker. Told you things I've never told Betty. Everybody needs a muse. You love her. Can't be honest with people you love. <laughs> you don't have to tell her everything. That's a very dark interpretation of relationships. I'm, I'm just sure saying. there are things about her you don't know. Well, that's true. Do you want to call? Let these long distance rates? Fuck that. Long distance didn't become reasonable until the last 15 years, man. So what are you going to do? I don't know. I have been watching my life. This is why he wanted to have the no contract thing. He could leave anytime he wanted to for this reason. He's discontented, you know? Putnam Powell and Lowell has offered to put a lot of marmalade on your toe. <laughs> Sit, Roger. Sit your ass down. I don't like being in the position of having to sell off my life's work because you have an increase in overhead. <laughs> oh, shit. Still, I have served this place for the last 20 years. It's a merger. You didn't build this shit from scratch, motherfucker. Jane makes me very happy. No, motherfucker. That's good to know. 40-year age difference, ass. <laughs> yep. His father-in-law's going to be mad as a motherfucker. <laughs> Dude, I paid for your apartment, motherfucker. You can't be treating my daughter like this. Check and make. Tom, how are you? Not well, good, here, motherfucker. Um, to be honest, I don't like having to make this phone call. Oh? Yeah, we're cutting off your money. Not? We're going to have to put Clearasell up for review. Oh, really? shit. That's right, leverage this That's motherfucker. That's Tom. You'll have 90 days to turn it around. Turn it oh, around. Oh, shit. You're distracted. What are we talking <laughs> about, Tom? Yeah, <laughs> we know what we're talking about, bitch. That if his wife's unhappy, his work suffers. You're goddamn right. You goddamn yes, they right. seem very directly related in this case, don't they, Tom? <laughs> Trudy's happiness should be your first priority. I think you should pull clear salt right now. <laughs> I don't think you're going to get what you want. What do you mean you were in love with her? Oh That's shit! That's not what I meant, and you know it. I don't yes, know. I heard, but um, I heard, motherfucker. Perhaps it is best if uh, we just give notice. Goodbye, yeah. Tom. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Burn this shit to the ground. Look at you. You're in the lavender haze. Lavender haze. That's one way to put it, I guess. The way she laughs. And the way she looks at me. He wants to hit that! And he did, apparently. At least twice. I think we've had, we've seen them have sex a couple more times, so at least four times. Well, I need you to give me a divorce. Oh, shit. Oh, well, of course. I never thought of that. 
Fucking A, that's right, they were legally uh, married. And I want you to know that I'm going to take care of you forever. You don't have to do that. Well. There'll be another Mrs. Draper. Yeah, it is weird that there's two. It really is weird. You'll have a family. This is the only non-toxic relationship in his life, Beth. This will probably be our last Christmas together. Oh. Why? <laughs> Dick. You're going to be my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't start out wanting to be a lying asshole. Interesting. This is a chance at a whole new life. This is a mistake. She should have been in his life. She would have had good influence on his wife and his kids. Because she's a good person. A really good person, and, and uh, like I said, non-toxic. She'll be walking you through this, oh, and shit. when Don climbs out from under the weather, Don has signed off on all of this. I don't know. When I was little, my mother would take a twin pop and oh, break God. it in half. <laughs> now and... we're going on a fucking memory lane story. <laughs>